Well then, Bunny, let's talk about books. You let's see, people always say, hey, Steve, insert leading question here. To which <laughs> I say, insert hilarious answer here. Huh? Huh? Isn't that funny? <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that funny? Really liked my hilarious answer. <laughs> People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that uh, there is no difference between good flan and bad flan. Yes. And there true. is no war and there is no war in Albania. Uh really? Are you sure? Yeah. That's that Wag the I, Dog. That one I wouldn't bet on. For those of you playing along at home, that's from Wag the Dog. <laughs> and what I also know is that I have been a loyal and hardworking adjacent employee at my local bookstore for over 17 years now. And in that time, that means that I have had 17 years uh, to write. So I'm almost done completing my work on my first novel, which I am entitling Booksellers Make Great Lovers. <laughs> the, entire, the entire book is just pictures of me. <laughs> entire book and as such I really do have my fingers on the pulse of the book world and I am here to rub my fingers all over your face but in a consensual way with this week's excitingly unexciting installment of Notes from the Bookstore and this week's installment of Notes from the Bookstore is brought to you by author Andy Weir's new book, Hey Member. Hey. Uh, hey Member, as in, hey, 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 remember me? I wrote the book The Martian, and then they <laughs> turned it into a movie, and then that was pretty good. And now I've got a new book, and you should buy it. What is it about? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't even know what it's about. <laughs> what matters is that you remember... That I wrote The Martian, and now here's my new book. And so, uh, look, at the cover, it's something space-related. Please buy my new book. I'm the guy who wrote The Martian. <laughs> so, very excited about that. It's January, Bunny. It is January. And you might be thinking to yourself, hey, look, the holiday season is finally over. Now Steve can finally take a deep breath and relax, Bunny. Yes. I, bunny. Was, I was thinking that. Bunny. So, so, so what? Do you think that I'm just sipping margaritas by the pool over here, Bunny? Is that what you think? And harassing the cabana boy, yes. How dare you, Bunny? <laughs> How dare you? you? You just waltz in here and just assume that I have it easy when, in fact, things are just now getting so, so, so much worse for me. Really? Yeah. Because now it's we're getting close to inventory time. Oh. Usually inventory is around February. Personally, for me, it's usually right around Valentine's Day. So now we're in full inventory prep mode. But here's the thing. Uh, usually around the beginning of November, maybe the middle of November, and throughout November and December, there are no returns allowed. I can't return a book at all. If we have okay. something, even if it's a bit damaged, even if it's old, even if even if it's a really old book and it's a bit shop worn, more than likely some desperate person is gonna still wanna buy that. <laughs> yes. So so no returns, no returns at all, no returns allowed. So then right around Christmas Day, they give us a big big ass list of books to return for after christmas but here's the difficult part there are no allow there are no returns allowed right around inventory time so basically we have a massive list of books and product we have to return and about a four to five week window to find all of them and process all of them and uh, right now we have about $265,000 worth of product that we need to find and process and box up and return. Okay. That sounds like also, fun. Yeah. Fun. Also, it's after, also it's after Christmas. So we have no hours. So it's a very stressful time. 
So pretty much everyone is now on returns duty, um, which means that no one is shelving or uh, shelving product or helping me at all. So the holidays may have ended, good sir, but the stress and the pressure, or as I like to call it, the stressure. The stressure. The stressor is is still with us. The stressor still abounds. <laughs> That's gonna be a good name for like a for like a book. The stressor still abounds. Yes. That's gonna be I I I I I can already see that being a page turner. Eleanor, stop dunking things in my coffee. I hate drinking my coffee and then getting a surprise inside. So please don't. Okay. I love you, Eleanor. Love you. Okay, thank you for giving me popcorn. That's awesome. So basically there's a lot to do and only I can do it. So you want to know how busy it is right now, Bunny? How busy it is for me at work? How, how, how busy is it? Let me tell you how busy it is. Let me tell you how... Last week, I'm going to work, and, and I grab an old pair of dress pants. They have a rip on the knee, but I, I, I still have them because receiving managers don't have to follow a dress code at all because yeah. really, it, you're just in the back. And so there is no dress code for me at all. As evident by that time, I came to work dressed as a pirate for no discernible reason. Yes. Or that time to that I came to work dressed in full body footsie pajamas. Not for any reason. I was just really experimenting with the whole no dress code policy. <laughs> so the, absolutely true. Anyway, the, I put on these old dress pants. They had a bit of a rip on the on one of the knees and they fit a little bit tight but anyway i'm just grabbing some pants i'm heading to work i go to work this is last week yeah i go to work and i'm like okay i've got a budget i've got like 180 190 boxes coming in today and just me and i also have to do some shelving and i have to process the whole the the greeting card returns so this is going to be a busy day oh look something on the floor i bend down and pick it up and Rip. Oh. Right along the ass crack. <laughs> Ripped my pants. Now, Stephen ripped his pants. There's a ghost in receiving that just ghost. really wanted his ass. Yeah, yeah, there's oh. just a very rapey ghost, yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Did I leave work? No, I did not. <laughs> it was cold that day, and I was wearing three layers of clothing. So I just took one of the layers off a long sleeve shirt. I tied it around my waist and I continued working. Wow. That's, that's like tossing yourself on a live grenade. It felt really weird because my ass was getting a lot of air. Yeah. That usually doesn't get in that area. Um, but, but yeah, I had this, I just had, I had a long sleeve shirt. I tied it around my, my waist, uh, Kurt Cobain style, and no one had any idea that my pants had ripped. <laughs> Stayed working. That's dedication. That is dedication. That is dedication. That and is and, and they never recognize you. Yeah, that is loyalty and dedication. That is dead loyal occasion occasion. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the holiday season... The holiday season at the end of December, uh, it has been uh, very, very good to me. Okay. Because <laughs> Christmas, Christmas <laughs> was on a Monday, which is a day that we usually have a ton of deliveries. So I got an extra day off. That's an extra day off for me yeah. that week. So the week of Christmas, uh, I only had to work four days. Then the next week, New Year's Day was also on a Monday. So I had two weeks of just working four days. Uh -huh. And it was it was pretty nice. I would say really, really, really nice. But I have five kids in this house. <laughs> yes. Emerald worked and I had to take her to work. And it was four degrees outside, buddy. 
the air was hurting my face. <laughs> Why was invisible air hurting my face? I, I, I don't know. The air should never hurt. Amber, Am, and then Amber is always with her boyfriend, and then Bella and Maxwell are always fighting, and Eleanor, my year and a half old, let's get real here, okay? Hey. Every day, Eleanor is a, has a different persona. Discovering <laughs> who she is. You yeah, she, yeah, she's discovering who she is. She wakes up, oh God, get away from me, Dad, you're not Mommy. And then she wakes up the next day. Uh, Mom, can you get the fuck out of the way? Hi, Daddy. Can you hold me? <laughs> Aw, I love you. Now, please put me down. I'm going to go grab Maxwell's butt and then hit him in the face with a stick. <laughs> the other day, Bella was, is laying down on the floor and she's watching TV. She's laying down on the floor on the little kid's couch and she's watching TV. And so Eleanor gets up and sits down right next to Bella's head. Yeah. And she just, she just is, she's just there right next to her. And Bella's watching TV and Eleanor's right there by her, by her head and just, Bea, 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 Bea. And she starts hitting her in the head. Bea, Bea, Bea. Bea and Bella just goes, What? And Eleanor's <laughs> like, Oh my god, that's fucking hilarious. I'm gonna keep this up. Bea, Bea, Bea. And Bella's like, Stop it! Stop hitting me! What? And Eleanor's like, Oh, nothing. This is just fucking funny now. <laughs> Bella's like, Fine, I'm gonna stand up. She stands up and she goes and she lays down on the couch. And then you just slowly see this baby stand up and slowly start waddling to the couch. <laughs> and Bella's already there, like, with a pissed off face, just, no, no, no. And she's just there, just, <gasps> Bea, Bea, Bea. <laughs> so, what I'm saying is, these extra days off have been real, and they've been fun. Yeah. But they haven't been real fun. Oh, These kids are challenging when they're all in the house. That? They are challenging. <laughs> Bella and Maxwell have this massive rivalry that none of us understand. Yeah, okay. It's, it's like some serious Shakespearean Game of Thrones I killed Mufasa type shit going on. <laughs> That none of us know about, but like this massive, complicated rivalry. Yeah, yeah. It's it's Coke and Pepsi up in here. <laughs> I don't know which is which, but that's basically Bella and Maxwell. So in sadder news, Bunny. Yes, Bunny. I've got some sad news. Okay, what's what's this? <sighs> Some very sad news. This is going to be sad, not just, not just to uh, book lovers, but also to people who have obsessive compulsive disorder. Oh, really? Uh, so, uh, Bonnie, you remember, um, a few weeks back. <clears throat> when in notes from the bookstore, when we did our special look at everyone's aunt and grandmother's favorite mystery author, Sue Grafton. Yes. She a book is for the every le letter in the alphabet. She is the legendary mystery author who wrote the Kingsley Milhone alphabet series, which is funny because I swear to God, the series is super ultra massively popular, yeah. but no one in, I have worked at a bookstore for over 17 years, no one has ever said, oh, do you have the Kingsley Milhone series? <laughs> like, what the hell? Like, no one knows the Kingsley Milhone series. They just go, you got the alphabet books? Yeah, I got the alphabet books. Let me take you to the alphabet books. <laughs> so, uh, 
She is the author of the legendary mystery books A is for Alibi, B is for Burglar, C is for Corpse, D is for Deadbeat, E is for Evidence, F is for Fugitive, G is for Gumshoe, H is for Homicide, I is for Innocent, J is for Judgment, K is for Killer, L is for Lawless, M is for Malice, N is for Noose, O is for Outlaw, P is for Peril, Q is for Quarry, R is for Ricochet, S is for Silence, D is for Trespass, U is for Undertow, V is for Vengeance, W is for Wasted, X, and Y is for Yesterday. Okay. The fact that I was able to say that and I have asthma, just the, the I want and I have asthma to be added on to that because I think that that's a fairly a is impressive. For yes. Yeah, no, Fuck no, off. not A is for asthma. I'm just I saying. I all of that over my music. It's you know an impressive. Sorry? Like, you can't even complete the fucking alphabet because the bitch had to go and die? He, 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 wait, she spoil. Died? Jesus <laughs> Christ. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, God. <laughs> Well, uh, here's some sad news for you that's really sad and will come as a shock. This is, this is, no, no. <laughs> news, this really will come as a shock to you, okay? Yeah. Sad, okay. sad news. I'm sad to say. And uh, this will come as a shock to you, but. Musician Adam Warrock shut down his website, adamwarrock.com, so. No! Looks like, looks oh my like, god! Looks like there will be no new music from my absolute favorite nerdcore rapper of all time, Mr. Adam Warrock. And I'm still trying to get over that. Because yeah. I loved that man. I loved his music. I saw him live in concert at a comic book store in Oklahoma City, for shit's sake. <laughs> One of the coolest, weirdest concerts I've ever been at i was sitting on the floor of a comic book store literally like 10 feet away from adam warrock really (laughs) weird but yeah uh looks like adam warrock is done with music and i'm sad about that but you should be that's that's terrible i i i had i had heard of this guy who wrote an album of raps based on Firefly and I'm like, well, I've never seen Firefly. I don't care. And then it's like, oh, the, you remember the guy who did the Firefly rap album and he gave it away for free? Now he has a Doctor Who one. And I'm like, great. Don't care. And then it's like, oh, he's also... Now, you remember that guy from before? He released a three-song EP of music uh, rap songs about Parks and Recreation. You had me at Parks! <laughs> I am downloading it now. <laughs> so I, I loved the music of Adam Warrock, and I'm sad to see him go. So sad. Rest in peace, Adam Warrock. He's not dead, but his music career is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. And it's, and it's, it's, yeah, it's sad. I remember when people yeah. died. You know. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I'm really sad. Oh, and also Sue Grafton is dead. Oh, okay. Also, Sue Grafton died, uh, striking a painful blow to people with OCD everywhere. Yes. Because apparently she uh, had a, a very difficult two year battle with cancer. And so once Sue Grafton had died, everyone's like, oh, she's dead. Oh, well. Can't wait for uh, Z to come out. But apparently she hadn't worked on it at all. She was busy with cancer. <laughs> uh-huh. So it, it it took her all the strength she had just to write uh, Why is for Yesterday. She didn't even get started with uh, the letter Z. And so uh, her sister, I believe, was the one who announced that uh, Sue Grafton is dead. And now they're calling the series... Uh, the series, which was the whatever Beverly Millhouse, whatever the hell alphabet series. Yes. Now they're calling the series the alphabet that ends in Y. That's horrible. That 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 that, that you were so it's cool. not ironic. It's not satire. It's yeah. not. It's too long. It's. It 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 was so close. Yeah. It, she was so close. So close. Very sad. Don't you think maybe she planned it this way? Maybe. 
Or you know who I think you know who I think is to blame? Uh, the deep state. The deep state, yeah. The deep state. I thought you the were going for Louis C.K. No, 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 no. Although, although what he did to women really does affect all of us. It's like Lance Armstrong. I blamed him for everything for like a year and a half. Because <laughs> his lies affected all of us. So basically, everything is Harvey Weinstein's fault right now. Oh, yeah. Everything. Most That's just how it is. Yeah. So, very sad. No, but the deep state is basically, uh, who's at fault for everything now? Yeah, they replaced the Illuminati. They, 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 yeah. they, they are now instead of the New World Order. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. the deep state. The deep state globalists. <laughs> and that is it for Notes from the Bookstore this week. And remember, you too can save 10% on all of your purchases. And all you have to do is just get people to read. It's so <laughs> sad that so many people read but the only reason they read is because another more popular medium told them to. Yes. That like 60 or 70% of people are only in the bookstore because it's like, Oh, I'm looking for this book. Uh, I, I saw it on TV. I, I, Oh, oh, they were mentioning this book on NPR. (laughs) And, uh, do you have that book? Or, uh, yeah, I read this review in the paper. I have the article cut out here. Or, uh, yeah, I'm looking for that movie. Is Do you that... have that book with the, with the scary clown? Do you have that? <laughs> I, I always thought that people went to bookstores hoping to see a book crash. No, people come to bookstores for free Wi-Fi and tables. <laughs> and couches. And also because uh, there's a TV show based on a book or there's a movie. That's the only reason why people are reading right now. And it's sad. The majority of people. But but it is it is it is what it is. This is my life. Yes. And cut. <laughs> <laughs>